If any of you are like me, you'll have been running, building and shield surfing around Hyrule now for the last 3 months in Tears of the Kingdom. It's hard to believe that 3 months have passed already and unlike Breath of the Wild we have heard absolutely nothing to date about downloadable content for the largest ever Zelda game. To put it into perspective, Breath of the Wild launched with the expansion pass being purchasable. This pass would allow players to pre-buy the DLC prior to its release. But Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have that, so either Nintendo are keeping things a mighty big secret or have no plans for downloadable content for the game. The first piece of DLC, The Master Trials was released on June 30th 2017, a near full 4 months after the game released. But with this time period fast approaching, all we want to know Nintendo is where the hell is my DLC? There's not even been a remote sniff at what the DLC could well be and that's what we're looking at in this video, 5 ideas for what could be involved in the downloadable content for Tears of the Kingdom. Hey, listen. Number 1 Master Mode while it's not a new outfit or a cool device, this one absolutely qualifies as a no-brainer for Tears of the Kingdom. One of the best additions during the Master Trials downloadable content was a hard mode of sorts for Breath of the Wild, where monsters were all scaled up by at least one level and a totally new form of monster were added to the game, Golden Beasts. These, a take on the Golden Monsters from the Minish Cap were a great addition to the game, adding more health to the silver enemies who were tough enough as they were. The thing is, Fuse as an ability semi broke the game. You could almost far too easily create weapons of over 100 power, which then factored in with the fact that you can break enemies such as Lionels by mounting them with an already existing but nearly broken weapon. And even the toughest enemies in the game, Silver Lionels and Gliox, are almost far too easy to defeat even for those that don't value the combat massively in this game. Golden enemies though would change the game once again. The addition of these creatures would mean that weapons would break faster and the fights themselves would last longer. This would also mean that Ultra Hand creations that could destroy these creatures without you even having to lift a finger would potentially not last long enough with the game's battery meter, so that would even take that element out of breaking the game even more. The game desperately needs a way of increasing the difficulty considerably, as while at the beginning you walk around and get one-shotted relatively easily by monsters, as you get further through the game, even silver monsters seem relatively speaking like cannon fodder for Link and his upgraded Gerudo Scimitar. Golden monsters would add to this difficulty, as would the real difference maker. Hunger and Thirst. In fact, I alluded to this in my theory about Link being a god and would even go so far as to add tiredness into the mix as well. I do understand the risk though that gets run with Zelda becoming far too similar to The Sims, but adding tiredness into Master Mode would ensure that we would need to fire stables or beds to sleep in. Campfires would also suffice, and we could even get brand new Zonai devices, which could operate as a portable bed for Link to sleep in. Hunger and Thirst were originally something that were planned for Breath of the Wild but it never made it into the game even as a mechanic within Master Mode. This for me would be the single biggest game changer in the entire series. I'd even accept if they nicked stamina for this mechanic. The basic premise would be akin to how Minecraft would work with Hunger, where you would need to eat at regular intervals in order to resume running or climbing. As you run out of food in your system, Link begins to suffer damage as a result of his lack of nourishment. Thirst works in the same way also, with items such as Splash Fruit now having more of a use outside of throwing them to get rid of the goop on the floor. Now of course, there will be a few implementations in order to help Link survive this harsh world. The first will be a new type of shop at some of the key areas or even maybe the Zonai Forges. An actual blacksmith who for a cost of the breaking weapon, some rupees and some materials will be able to repair these nearly broken weapons. This would just make life a little easier and combat us running out of weapons so easily as all monsters would be leveled up immediately. While it's too late to go in and patch a lot of these things, they would be an incredible addition and we could even go one further and add one last mechanic, something I was almost certain would be in effect from day one, the Bloodstained Moon. I'd like to see a slight change to this within a master mode that sees monsters level up when a blood moon hits and not just be revived. If they are already defeated, they come back at the level they were at originally. But if they already spawned, then a blood moon should 100% allow these creatures to level up even further, all the way up to their gold counterparts. I mean, I figure if we're going to go hard, let's go hard. Number 2. More Sky Islands Talking of going hard, Nintendo really went hard on the marketing of the Tears of the Kingdom and one of the key strategies for them was to promote going into the sky. They even released a 10 minute gameplay trailer that was almost exclusively based in the sky. So how disappointing was it when you left the Great Sky Isles, you reach the surface and find out that you almost never have to go up into the air again. The Sky Islands were probably my main one issue with the game in general. Other than the 32 shrines that sat above the land and the new revamped Temple of Time and the Great Sky Islands, there was almost zero point in the tiny islands that were dotted all over the world. In fact, this seemed a bit more like a plot device more than anything else, a way of telling us that these islands were once whole entities and not split up. And how is the Zonai? 
way up in the heavens. We also managed to get two dungeons out of the Sky Islands, the Water Temple and the Wind Temple. And one of these was seriously underwhelming. Seriously. First of all, why is the Water Temple above the land? And secondly, as a dungeon goes, this could have been so much better. Oh, how I miss you actual water based dungeons. But based on the marketing and the push on Link being on the Sky Islands, you would honestly think that the game spent 50% of its time above ground. But we got absolutely nowhere near. In fact, we actually spend more time at the location that wasn't advertised at all, the depths, and by a long way, due to the fact that it's the grind center, a whole new map, and that we need to upgrade a whole new mechanic using a currency that is only found in the depths. Another idea for DLC is really simple. More sky islands. Give us more to do up in the air. It's just that simple. Give us more variation. I'm sorry, but the sky islands are made up pretty much of one of three types of island. These flower shaped islands where we literally get to take a picture for a side quest. These spherical islands that contain a puzzle of some format in order to unlock a shrine. And these slightly more sprawling islands that have a zonai dispenser, some form of zonai parts and a shrine. Sometimes we may get a flux construct up here too, but they qualify as exactly the same type of island. That's it. So hey listen, what do you propose we do I hear you cry? Simple. But I'll tell you right after you've hit the magic button that subscribes you to the channel and after you've dropped a thumbs up on the video. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Done it? Okay, so my solution to the Sky Island problem is actually really simple. I want to see more Sky Islands drop from the heavens. I want to see bigger islands with former broken down civilization ruins. Old towns, castles and areas of interest that could be marked by old events that happened millennia ago. Tell me that it wouldn't be absolutely awesome to come across a Sky Island with the ruins of Skyloft from Skyward Sword, or even the city in the sky from Twilight Princess. We don't need these areas to be massively interactable, we just need extra things to do up in the air. I would take having extra boss fights, extra levels of flux construct or new versions of the Gliok, or even more stealth areas with level 4 constructs in these areas. New side quests forcing us to go up here would also be heavily welcomed. We could do so much with this great area in the sky, and yet here we are, heading up there for what seems to be very little incentive. Number 3. A new trial of the sword. You know Nintendo, when you tell players the sword of legend that we're about to pull from a freaking dragon's head is more powerful than before because it's been bathed in light for thousands of years, we kind of expect it to be, well, stronger. It's evident in the fact that Ganondorf can cause the tip to fly off and degrade it immediately, but by the end of the game it can actually defeat the King of Evil, but the actuality of this is that it's no stronger than its Breath of the Wild counterpart. In fact, technically, it's weaker than the final form that's in the former game because of the Trial of the Sword downloadable content. The Master Sword clocks in with a pretty dismal end stat of 30 base power. With fusions in Tears of the Kingdom, we can up this a decent amount, but as a base power, 30 is well disappointing considering this blade is legendary. In Breath of the Wild, once we get Fi's power activated, and yes, I blame Fi for this, as she is blatantly latent within the sword, we have a new base power of 60 and a lovely blue hue. But this sword in Tears of the Kingdom, even with the light's blessing, is still only rated at 30 power, so by nature we need to find ourselves a way of upping the stakes when it comes to the Master Sword. Now, I'm not saying that I want another enemy gauntlet like the Trial of the Sword in Breath of the Wild. That doesn't appeal to everyone. No, what I propose is a new type of trial. One that utilises a different side of the Triforce. See, enemy gauntlets allude to power. The puzzles that we see in the dungeons and shrines are all about wisdom. So why not have something represent the dragon or wolf in Zelda lore and have a courageous trial? How about a new set of dungeons filled with enemies, new puzzles several stories high? How about we reuse the old dungeons even but put time limits on them, adding intensity to the completion of the dungeons? Doing this in fact would add some replayability back to the dungeons that feel like one time things, and with the right time limits being imposed could end up making dungeons such as the fire temple incredibly frustrating. It would be a good excuse to learn these dungeons like the back of our hand in order to complete them quickly to get our reward. At the end of the four base dungeons, fire, water, lightning and wind, I feel like we could have something new. Something involving what the spirit temple perhaps should have been. Or even perhaps a temple of light or time which would see us solving light based puzzles using two of the most pointless zone knife parts, the light and the mirror. We could also have to attach a mirror onto a shield to bounce lights around. We had this teased in the Soyo Tanog shrine and again within the lightning temple itself when we got to use mirrors and lights to open our way forward. 
When I found out though that it's only replicated once more in the whole game aside from these two locations, it felt like a huge disappointment and I immediately wanted more. I love light puzzles, with some of my favourites being within the Stone Tower Temple in Majora's Mask. I was taken back to that immediately when solving some of these puzzles in Tears of the Kingdom, but I immediately wanted more. This could be Nintendo's way of giving back to us. The players. The real use of the light puzzle as we bounce lights around from four different areas onto the master sword to bathe it in light one more time and increase its power even further. These puzzles would need to be different enough to the lightning temple so I would propose enforcing the players use zone eye parts to make the light bounce around for more of a challenge. A gauntlet of dungeons with one final extra dungeon at the end of the game would add a bucket load of extra things to do in the game and would increase the gameplay time by a lot. It's difficult to speculate how much but I could see at least an extra 10 hours at a bare minimum from this and with the reward being a hyper powered master sword with 100 base damage it would be well worth the use of all the extra new assets for the players and absolutely all of this could tie into one location, the temple of time in the sky. We do far too little in this area in the game. In fact, we use it at the very start of the game to transport the Master Sword back to Zelda so that she can fix it. But after that, the Temple of Time is kind of useless. Sure, we can get an origin story side quest that's completely missable from the top of it. But other than that, what does the Temple of Time, this awesome spiral building that was so prominent in all of the promo work for the game, actually hold? Just like the pedestal of time in Breath of the Wild activated the Trials of the Sword, the Temple of Time could house an entry point to a new Trial of the Hero, which would see Link have to best all temples in a quick time before finishing a new light-based temple with a new boss at the end of it. That boss? we're going to have to wait for, as there's one more possible downloadable content offering that we could see before I go into this. And this idea was presented by at Giancarlo Thomas Sononi. Number 4, Extra Campaign. Giancarlo suggests that we should see an extra 30 hour campaign that connects all of the story together leaving no loose ends. This extra storyline should connect to the past, where Zelda was, to the future where Link is now. It should encompass the Triforce, how the current Ganondorf came to be and why the Zonite went extinct as well as confirm or deny who the dragons, something I may have looked a little too extensively at lately, really are, and whether the Zonite indeed swallowed secret stones to become the dragons. I think these answers are, Giancarlo, what everyone wants from the game. But then also if they did this, just what in the hell would I have to talk about on this channel? See, Nintendo have this thing. They actually like to leave loose threads in Zelda games so that people continue to talk about them as time goes on, and so that they can get a little bit of free publicity from outlets such as YouTube. The more people talking about their game in 3 months, a year or 7 years after the release, the better for them. This is why I don't think they would tie everything up together in this way, but an extra 30 hours of gameplay with extra story elements? Sure, sign me up. Instead of tearing the suggestion down though and making Giancarlo feel like rubbish for making his suggestion, let's look at how this could work in reality, because to me it would seem like the storyline has, well, relatively speaking, all been sealed up, a bit like the husk of Ganondorf. The first obvious way is to create new areas in which we could gain memories from, similar to that of the geoglyphs. Now the main map is filled with these already, and we're talking about connecting to the past, so I propose that we could see story points in key locations of the depths. After all, this is an area that I have covered a lot, and concluded that it is the remnants of a past civilization, perhaps not Zonai, but a world even before that. I don't think anyone would benefit from us having more geoglyphs down here, but I certainly feel like we could have a side quest either started by Joshua, Robbie or Pura, explaining that more strange occurrences have happened in the depths. Sort of like temporal anomalies. Link could then venture down to the depths and find the anomalies, like a portal, where he is then transported to an area in the past in which he is then tasked with finding a particular item. Sort of a bit like Skyward Sword's absolutely terrifying Silent Realm sections. Upon finding these items or artifacts, or even new armor sets. Link then views a scene play out in front of him similar to the Dragon's Tears, where he sees the past elements that Giancarlo here outlaid in his comments. This would work pretty well for filling the gaps and would definitely be a way to go if Nintendo plan on Tears of the Kingdom being the final entry for the timeline in this Zelda series. The truth of the matter though is that neither this timeline nor the Zelda series in general are going anywhere, so I really don't think they'll close everything off just like that and adding 30 hours for what will be in reality a $10 or £10 DLC would be very unlikely, but thank you so much for the suggestion. If you want your suggestions to make it onto one of my videos, please drop a comment below and get involved on the community posts like this one, where Giancarlo got his suggestion answered. I posted this poll a few weeks ago and was amazingly surprised by the amount of votes for our top suggestion to Nintendo for what should be included in DLC upon release. At the time of writing this script, 59% of you voted for this option. Number 5, Dark Link. 
When we spoke about the Trial of the Sword, or Hero as I would call it, I mentioned the Light Temple, something that would serve as a final location for the Master Sword to gain its true, unrivaled power. I also teased the last boss, and there's just one boss from any Zelda game that suits the mood of a Light Temple entirely. Because when I think of Light, the first thing I think about is its counterpart, Darkness. Without one there can't be the other, and imagine after you spend a few hours setting up lights and mirrors to shine onto the Master Sword for it to fully power up, and just as you grab the Blade of Evil's Bane, a gate drops in front of the pedestal it sat in, and as Link stands in the light he just created, a shadow forms from his feet, reaching outwards and upwards, forming a human shape that us Zelda fans have been dying to see again in a proper capacity since Twilight Princess, and even then we didn't get to fight him back then. In fact, We've only ever got to fight Dark Link twice in the entire series history, in Adventure of Link as one of the final bosses, and Ocarina of Time as a sub-boss in the Water Temple. This fight, especially in Ocarina, is deemed as one of the very best parts of Ocarina of Time and of the series, and it's almost a perfect fight against an opponent who is as skilled as Link, with the same health as Link. Your exact shadow copies everything you do, when you do it, and that's what makes this fight such a challenge. Tears of the Kingdom is no stranger to challenging fights, especially against the penultimate final boss. But this would take that just one step further, with Dark Link doing his very best at parrying, perfect dodging and disappearing into the shadows to further mess with you as the player. He would be able to appear behind you, in front of you and hit you with his sword, or whatever weapon you are wielding including fused creations. If we really wanted to go extra, he could even have the zone I arm in this instance just to really mess with us, and ascend against us, fuse weapons and items together and hell, even create zone I creations. He could have a mirror image inventory able to use any foods that you've created to heal and would certainly have the same amount of health as the player at the current time of playing, which would encourage these crazy runs on the game of three heart runs so that they could get to this fight and have it easier. Combat wise, I'd like to see a fusion, no pun intended, between hand to hand combat, forcing Dark Link back into the shadow form on the floor and gimmick fighting like the boss battles in the dungeons, where the lights that we use to power the Master Sword could be used to damage his shadow form even further. This would probably be the most amazing boss fight in the history of Zelda, and would make any DLC that we've been waiting for even more worth the wait. And that's it, 5 possible ideas for DLC that could all be massively feasible and would dramatically improve the life of Tears of the Kingdom. But tell me. What would you want added in the form of DLC to this already incredible game? Get involved in the comments below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We are so close to the thousand mark now. You guys are all awesome. Thank you all so much. I'll see you next time. Bye!